The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Each week at this time, the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Well, another New Year's Day has come and gone, and we're sure you've made some wonderful resolutions for the new year that's just beginning, but there's no law against making a New Year's resolution on January 2nd as well as January 1st. So here's the resolution we'd like to recommend to you as a conscientious homemaker. This year, make your budget dollars go further. Make your family menus better by serving and using what millions consider the world's finest margarine, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Parquet, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. The only margarine that brings craft quality right to your table. Parquet is wonderful as a spread, a seasoning, or a shortening. You can get it to your grocers in the regular package, the handy color quick bag, or where state laws permit golden parquet in yellow quarters. The moment you taste it, you'll know you've found the quality margarine you're proud to serve at your table. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, at the beginning of each new year, a man does one of two things. He either resolves to improve his position or he surveys his situation with satisfaction and pats himself on the back. The great Gildersleeve is pretty well satisfied, and when he pats himself on the back, he uses both hands. Well, why, George, here's my name in the paper again. Water Commissioner Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve wishes all his customers a happy new year. Hey, that's yesterday's paper, huh? You no, know, it isn't, Leroy. I had them run the ad two days. I don't want anyone to miss it. Yeah, I'm happy, so at the beginning of this new year, I want to wish everybody else happiness. What are you so happy about? I'm the city water commissioner. Yeah, I know. Leroy... <laughs> Hello, Auntie Leroy. Hi. Well, yeah, Marjorie. Is Bronco home yet? Not yet, my dear. Oh, I'm so anxious to hear if he got his new job. Oh, Auntie, won't it be wonderful if Bronco moves to the Summerfield Realty Company? Well, Marjorie, it always amuses me to watch the eager beavers running around the first of the year changing jobs. But, Auntie, it's a larger firm than he's with now. There's a better future. Yeah, perhaps. But when a man skips around so much, he loses his identity. Why do you suppose my name is synonymous with water? Because you put an ad in the paper every New Year's? <laughs> no, Leroy. Because I've been on the same job for ten years. People have come to depend on me for water. Nobody can even take a bath without me. But, um, with Bronco, things are different. He's young, ambitious, and he'll be making so much more money. Well, money isn't everything. Heck no. It just buys everything. <laughs> well, I have some things that can't be bought. Good health, contentment, security. Well, Bronco thinks he'll get all that in his new job. Yeah, sure. These days, they offer you the moon. You look at this ad in the Summerfield Indicator. Kemi Products Corporation has good job for you. We need executives, engineers, machinists. High pay, short hours, long vacations with pay. Gosh! I wonder if they'd hire a little kid after school and then pay him all through summer vacation. <laughs> well, you always you believe this ad. The fellow can get almost anything he wants. Yeah, listen to this. Get your application blank today. Enjoy rapid advancement with this large company which is expanding with Summerfield. Opportunity is knocking. Open the door to your future. Well, that sounds good. Unky, if Bronco doesn't go with Summerfield Realty, he might get a good job out there. Oh, my goodness. Marjorie, that proves my point. You're just like Bronco. You want to change jobs every time the delivery boy throws a newspaper on the front porch. Every time it rains, oh, there's Bronco now. It isn't Bing Crosby. Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. Bronco, you got the job. Yeah, but it isn't raining pennies, Marge. It's raining dollars. Oh, Bronco. Hello, everybody. Well, congratulations, Bronco. Yeah. If you think this changing jobs is a thing to do. Oh, I'm not just changing jobs, I'm climbing up. I'm sales manager. Sales manager? Oh, darling, how wonderful. How much do you make? Leroy. <laughs> we don't ask things like that. If Bronco wants to tell us, we'd like to know, but we don't ask. 
Uh, yes, to volunteer the information. Well, uh, I want the first paycheck to be a surprise to Marge. So I'll just uh, write the figure on this envelope for you. Oh, Bronco, you tease. There you are, Uncle Mort. Well, three young men changing to another company. That isn't a bad monthly salary. Monthly? No, that's my weekly salary. I <laughs> weekly salary. Zeke. Unc, you turned pale. Marco must be making more than you do. <laughs> well, he... Oh, I'm so thrilled, Bronco. Come over here and tell your little wife all about it. Unky, may Bronco sit in your big chair? Well... Oh, Marge, I shouldn't sit in the commissioner's chair. Go ahead, sit in it. <laughs> sure, I'll sit on the piano stool. <laughs> Is it, Mr. Bronco? Oh, hello, Bertie. What's the good news about you? Oh, Bertie, he's sales manager of Summerfield Realty. Sales manager? Ain't that something? Yeah, Bronco's the big boss. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Bertie, how's dinner coming along? Coming right up, Mr. Gilfleet. Soon as I hear about the new big boss. Yeah, I thought I was the big boss around here. Well, Bertie, he's in charge of all the salesmen, and he's making a lot more money. Hey, Bronco, how about a buck for the movies tonight? Leroy, you don't ask Bronco for money. You ask me. I didn't want you to turn pale again. No. <laughs> Bronco, darling, you must be tired after such a successful day. I'll get your slippers for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. And I'll go get your pipe. Hmm. They used to wait on me that way. Him and his big, fat job. Bertie would like to do something, too. Anything special the new boss wants for dinner? Well, how about some of your hot biscuits, Bertie? Yes, sir. Hot biscuits for the new boss. Thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Bertie's going to bake hot biscuits for the new uh. boss. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you know what Bertie's going to do? Yes, Bertie. That's right, Bertie's going to bake hot biscuits for the new boss. <laughs> Water Commissioner, you deserted like a dried-up water hole. <laughs> uh, have you finished with that paper, Mort? Mort? <laughs> no, I haven't. Where's that ad about those big-paying jobs? I got a little excited last night. I don't want to answer this ad. I've been very happy here in the water department. George Mayor Terwilliger gets in my hair. Always snooping around like a toy bloodhound. Let me read this ad again. Opportunity is knocking. You open the door to your future. No, I won't answer it. Gilby, are you in there? Oop, that's not opportunity, that's Judge Hooker. Come in, Judge. My, my, you must have been concentrating hard. Yeah, I guess I was. I just stopped in, Gildy, to wish you a belated Happy New Year. Same to you, Judge. I see you're reading an employment ad. Me? What's happened? Has the water commissioner been receiving letters from his customers saying he's all wet? <laughs> no, Judge. My customers are my best friends. In fact, I command more respect from them than I do at home. What's the matter, Gildy? Bronco came home last night with a new job. He did? Darn good job, too. Better than I've got. In fact, he'll be making a lot of money. Good for Bronco. I always felt he had a brilliant future. Stop praising Bronco, you old goat. I hear enough of that around the house. Gildy, I'm surprised at you. What do you mean? It's very obvious that because of the accolade that Bronco's received, you feel that you have to outdo him. You're jealous. Jealous of my own son-in-law? Ridiculous. If you take my advice, you won't answer that ad. You shouldn't expect to keep pace with Bronco. You must realize, as I have, that the noble old tree must someday fall to make room for the strong young sapling. Mm, now I'm a stump. <laughs> but there are compensations if you'll only seek them out. Yeah, where do you find them? Well, Gildy, I found solace in new interests and activities. For instance, on the second Tuesday of every month, I attend the Smiling at 60 class. 
Smiling at 60 Club? There are smiles that make us happy. You judge. There are smiles that make us blue. Judge, stop it, please. Well, that's the way we open our meetings. Great. But I'm a long way from 60. Well, perhaps I can get you in as a junior member. We meet from 7 till 9.30 for cribbage, authors, and parcheesing. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Now, if you'll ever help to chart your course for the future... You bet. I'm going down and answer this ad while I can still walk. Right, George. They were pretty nice down there at Kenwood Products Corporation. Seemed impressed that the water commissioner called. And they need executives, that's for sure. You think I'll drop in Peavy's and fill out this application? Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Peavy, I uh, wonder if I can use your prescription typewriter. How's that? Your prescription typewriter. Mr. Gillespie, you don't know how to write a prescription. Unless it takes two O. <laughs> Peavy, I have to fill this out for the Chemie Products Corporation. Oh, I just happened to drop by there, and they forced this application blank on me. They need high-powered executives. You don't say. Well, who are you recommending? <laughs> me. My, my. How about the typewriter, Peavy? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're welcome to use it. It's back there with the pillboxes. Yeah, thanks. It'll only take a few minutes. It'll take longer than that on my typewriter. <laughs> Great. I guess it will at that. What is this? A typewriter or a lobster trap? Well, it seems it caught a crab this time. <laughs> yeah, all right, Peavy. Now, let's see. Well, they filled in my name. All I have to do is list my qualifications. You stuck already? <laughs> no, Peavy. Yeah, let's see. How long is your present job? Well, ten years in water. Mostly hot. <laughs> Peavy, this is important. Well, I understand the Chemi Products has put up a pretty big plant here in Summerfield. Oh, you'd be amazed, Pete. They've got branches all over the country. It's a big outfit. Oh, mm, so I hear. Now, uh, I need some important men for recommendations. I'll put down Judge Hooker and Police Chief Gate. No, they won't do. Looks too much like I'm involved with the law. <laughs> yeah, I can put down Rumson Bullard. He doesn't like me, but he's out of town. Oh, my goodness. Peavy, why don't you do something about this typewriter? The keys keep sticking and the backspacer won't work. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you don't like my typewriter, why don't you do the work at your office? Well. Afraid the mayor might catch you? I'm not afraid, Peavy. But you know how nosy he is. No reason to get him upset before I have the new job. Yeah, he might fire you before you can quit. <laughs> Peavy, my qualifications are so good, anybody would be a fool to fire me. Well, we may find out. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mayor. Oop, here he is. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. What can I do for you? Give me a pound of my favorite pipe tobacco. Okay, well. Ah, thank you. Gildersleeve, is that you back there? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm surprised to see you behind the prescription counter. You trying to qualify as Mr. Peavy's delivery boy? Yeah, oh, no. No, I'm just hunting and pecking at the typewriter. If the mayor sees what he's packing, he'll be hunting all right. <laughs> you, uh, you have a typewriter at the office that isn't used very much, Gildersleeve. <laughs> you have? I was by your office, and there was nobody there. Well, I was there. You bet I left. That's not a good way to start the new year, Gildersleeve. Unless you're serious about becoming Mr. Peavy's delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Mr. Peavy. Drop in again. Hmm. You didn't say goodbye to me. He practically told you goodbye. <laughs> Him and his sly insinuations. As soon as I fill out this application, I'm going to write my letter of resignation. You'd better read it with asbestos gloves. Now, don't do anything you'll regret, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy, when I leave City Hall, it's the mayor who'll regret it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> There's 
one simple reason why so many people prefer parquet margarine to any other spread, seasoning, or shortening. It tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. Parquet is made fresh by craft from selected products of American farms. It's rushed fresh to your store in refrigerated trucks. It's kept fresh by your grocer until you buy it. And every package of parquet margarine is flavor-dated. Grocer's stocks are checked regularly by Kraft representatives. That's why Kraft can assure you that any package of parquet you buy anywhere, anytime, will be fresh. Really fresh. And that's why it tastes so good. Tomorrow when you shop, get a pound of parquet margarine. Taste it and discover how good a Kraft-made, Kraft-protected margarine can be. Wonderful as a spread, a seasoning, or a shortening. Get parquet in the regular package, the handy color quick bag, or where state laws permit yellow parquet in golden quarters. Yes, parquet margarine made by Kraft. the great Gildersleeve son-in-law, Bronco, came home with a fine new job and usurped the position of popular idol of the household. But the great Gildersleeve isn't easily dethroned. He's looking for greener pastures himself. Hmm. A lot of people are applying for work at this plant. This line's a block long. Yeah, well, I don't see many of the executive type. Oop, madam, please stop pushing Yes, darn cop. Insisting I stand in line, too. You'd better watch it. Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. Yeah, that's me. Yes. Will you please step out of line and come into the office? You bet. Goodbye, madam. Step in here, Mr. Gildersleeve, and close the door. Yeah, thank you. I'm uh, Mr. Johnson, the personnel director. Yeah, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. I know. Sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, after you. Yo, you're already down. <laughs> I, uh... See you're on time for your interview this morning? Yes, indeed. Johnny in the spot. Jerry at the rattle. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Gildersleeve, we've gone over your application very carefully, and we're interested in you. Well, fine. You hold quite a responsible position here in Summerfield. Would you care to tell us why you want to make a change? Well, my son-in-law is making more money than I am. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I see you have a sense of humor. That's important for an executive. Mr. Gildersleeve, when can you come to work for us? Almost immediately, Mr. Johnson. Of course, I'll have to give the mayor notice, but that won't take long. Good. I can see you move fast, and so does Cabby Products Corporation. We'll call you tomorrow about your assignment and the term. You mean money? You may rest assured that you'll be making more than you do now. Great. Those are the kind of terms I like. <laughs> George Wendell, the mayor, opens this envelope. I really told him off. It'll be the first five-page letter of resignation he ever received. Yeah, I'll just put it here on the mantle for now. I'm not going to mail it until I get that phone call from Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I'm no fool. You know, I won't tell the family yet, either. Breakfast waiting! Coming, Bertie! Yeah, I guess everybody started. I better get in there before Bronco takes my place at the head of the table. Good morning, Auntie. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, kitties. Bronco. Morning. You pull up a chair, Mort. Oop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you have your all ahead of me this morning. Yeah, Bronco's in a hurry, so we thought we'd eat with him. Oh, yes. Uh, Bronco has to get down early, Uncle. Yeah, my new job entails a number of heavy responsibilities. So you got heavy responsibilities. You're making heavy dough. <laughs> Surely, Roy, true. I don't know why I came in. Nobody's offered me any breakfast. Well, one more sip of coffee, and I have to go down and give my salesman a pep talk. More coffee, Mr. Bronco? Oh, Miss Kilsey, you're here. Yes, Bertie, I've been here. Yes, sir. I'll get you breakfast just as soon as I take care of Mr. Bronco. Here's your coffee, Mr. Bronco. Uh, just half a cup, Bertie. Bronco, Bronco, Bronco. Here's the cream and sugar, darling. Thank you, Marjorie. My George, it's time for me to fight back. Yeah, I want to know what I'm up to. I don't know I'm up to something pretty big. Now, Miss Gilsey, I'll be right back with your breakfast. Well, make it a big one, Bertie. Yes, sir. 
I want a big breakfast, Kitty, because big things are afoot. Well, got to go. I have a good day, Bronco, but don't be too hard on the salesman. Yeah, I say, big things are afoot. Yeah. What's up, Bunk? You yeah, well, any minute now, I'll have big news for all of you, financially speaking. There's going to be a little more money in the pocket this year. <laughs> Giving up smoking, are you? <laughs> My boy, with the money I'll be making, I can smoke cigars a foot long and light them with $5 bills. Yeah? What's going to happen, Unky? Where are you going to get all the money? Yeah, kiddies, let's not get too curious. Yeah, I'll tell you when the time comes. But it's big. Very big. Well, I've got to go. Congratulations, Mort. I don't know what for, but congratulations. I'll see you to the door, darling. Uh, see you all at dinner. You bet you will. So long, Bronco. Here's your breakfast, Miss Gilsey. Everything you like. Yeah, thank you, baby. Yeah, I uh, guess you were out of the room when I told the children the big news. What big news? That there's going to be big news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I think I know who it is. Do you want me to answer the phone, Auntie? You no, know, Marjorie, I'll get it. Hello, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve speaking. Mr. Gildersleeve, this is Mr. Johnson of Chemi Products Corporation. Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Johnson. We've had our meeting, and we'd like you to come in and talk about money. Oh, fine. Nothing I'd rather talk about. <laughs> and we've decided where you best fit into our organization. Good. You don't mind a little driving, do you? No, oh, no, I'd plan to drive to work. Well, this is a longer drive. We need you in Albuquerque. Well, I didn't... <laughs> Albuquerque! <laughs> Mexico. Uh, can you drive out there next week? Albuquerque. Well, what do you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's this way, Mr. Johnson. What way? Yeah, I don't know. Well, then, think it over, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. What's the matter, Ronky? The matter? Marjorie, I can't leave you and little Leroy. What are you talking about? Hey, nothing, my dear. Hey. Am I glad I didn't mail my resignation to the mayor? Say, where is that letter? What letter? The one that was on the mantel. Oh, a Bronco was going by the post office, so he mailed it for you. Oh! <laughs> Judge, I can't go to Albuquerque. You're my lawyer. What am I going to do? You ask me, Gildy. You've already done it. I didn't come to your office to be reminded of that. I need help. Why don't you go to the post office and try to retrieve your letter to the mayor? Yeah, I did. Did you ever try to get a letter back from Uncle Sam? Well, no. From the time I'd filled out that long form at the post office, my letter had gone out on the afternoon delivery. Well, there'll be old Billy to pay now. You let us start for 1952. I promised the little family I'd have big news for him today. When the mayor reads your letter, there'll be big news, all right. <laughs> Judge, I've burned my bridges behind me. I can't leave town to take a job, and I can't stay in town without one. Gilday, the only thing for you to do is to go to the mayor and try to get back your letter of resignation before he opens it. Well, yeah, we might beat the postman. He delivers about this time. You come on, Judge. What do you want me to do? You come down the hall to the mayor's office with me. If he gets violent, I want a witness. <laughs> Very well, Gilda. Oh, I have to get that letter. Won't be able to face the family. Bronco's ruler of the roost at home now. If I go back without a job, they probably won't even speak to me. Mr. Mayor? Who is it? Me and my lawyer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Gildersleeve. Come in, Gildersleeve. Come in. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Afternoon, Your Honor. Gentlemen. Here, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I see the afternoon has been delivered, and you're opening the mail. What do you usually do with mail? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, do you mind if I look through the stack? Gildersleeve, get your hands off my desk. I'm busy reading a very interesting letter. Five pages long. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> no. Well, anyone else... Gad, what crush. <laughs> now, Mr. Mayor. I think you're a tight-fisted old rooster. Tin on politician. Gildersleeve. Now, wait. This is the most outrageous. I'll sue you. I'll, I'll... Let's I'll, get I'll... out of here, Gilda. Gildersleeve, I'm going to... Yes. Yes. Sir, uh, Gildersleeve. 
yes. Yes. You... You are. Yes, come on, Judge. Uh, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Uh, why, there must be some mistake. He's still in the employ of the city of Summerfield. I I realize that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, you do? Well, I'm very sorry. Good day, sir. You well, I... Uh, Gildersleeve, that was a Mr. Johnson at the Chemi Products Company. You didn't go over there and apply for a position, did you? You see, Mr. Mayor... They're trying to steal my key man. After all the years you've been with us, those pirates... Yes, but... They forced you to write that letter to me. Hmm. Well, I can see through their tricks. Gildersleeve, you aren't going to leave our little family, are you? Me? So, Mr. Mayor, I... I intended to give you a raise today. Another $25 a month. Just think, Gildy, and you would have stayed for nothing. Look, what's this? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Mayor, I decided not to take that other job. Oh, I see. Well, then it won't be necessary to give you a raise. <laughs> oh, yes, it will. Oh? That's why I'm here. I'm a witness. <laughs> And judge, let's go tell the big news to the little family. The great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you go to your grocer's tomorrow, pick up a pound of parquet margarine, the craft quality margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Get parquet in the regular package, the color quick bag, or yellow parquet in golden quarters. Use it as a spread, a seasoning, and a shortening. For every use, it's the margarine that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. everybody. I have something to tell you. What is it, Uncle? Oh, let's hear it. What happened, Unc? Well, your old uncle took another big step up the ladder of success. I got a fine raise in salary. Oh, really, Unky? How do you do it? I simply went to the mayor and put my foot down. Good men are hard to find, and he knows... Oh, boy, we're in the dough. I can get a new bike. Uh Uh-huh, and you can have the house all redecorated. At last, you can get a new car and buy yourself a couple of new suits. Yes, but... Bronco, we won't have to borrow the $5,000 from the bank to build our house. We can borrow it from Uncle Morris. Sign us. You've been kiddies. $25 a month. This is the most expensive raise I ever got. (laughs) Good night, folks. Greg Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Stanley Farrar, Joe Forte, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Question. What's the best way to raid an icebox? Answer. With Kraft prepared mustard, of course. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard to the sandwich you make, you add a lot of tang. And here's something for you professional icebox raiders to remember. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft's mustard with that delicately spiced, smooth flavor. Ah, and then there's Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then you won't meet up with a dish, but what you'll have just the mustard to add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life. He's next on NBC.